Hello friends, welcome to AI Medical School. In the previous video we started a new subject which is dermatology. In that video we discussed the intro of dermatology and the basic structure and function of the skin. If you missed out to watch, you can click on I button to watch it. So in this video, we are going to discuss the dermatology disease the cellulitis and erysipelas. But before getting started, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to it and press the bell icon for latest videos. Cellulitis and erysipelas are caused by superficial and deeper infection of the dermis and subcutaneous tissues, respectively. Cellulitis preferentially involves the lower extremities, while the erysipelas tends to affect the face. Risk factors include lymphedema, site of entry, leg ulcer, trauma, presence of tinea pedis, athlete's foot, venous insufficiency, leg edema and obesity. It is usually caused by a streptococcus, rarely a staphylococcus, and sometimes community-acquired methicillin-resistant streptococcus aureus. In this picture, you can see early or mild cellulitis and later severe cellulitis. Early or mild cellulitis has a small surface area, compared to severe cellulitis, with redness, pain, swelling, and heat. And in later severe cellulitis, have a larger surface area with worsening pain, more swelling, and skin is tight, and also redness travels throughout the infected area. Here is the picture of cellulitis. Now the clinical features of cellulitis. Cellulitis presents as erythema in the involved area, with poorly demarcated margins, swelling, warmth and tenderness. There may be a low-grade fever. In erysipelas, the area is raised, and erythematous and sharply demarcated from normal skin. How to diagnose it? The diagnosis is clinical. Patients should also be evaluated for risk factors for cellulitis, which may prevent recurrence if treated. In the majority of cases, culturing blood or skin aspirates does not reveal a pathogen. Deep venous thrombosis is the main differential diagnosis. Now the treatment. Treatment is with fluxacillin or erythromycin if penicillin allergic. If the disease is widespread, Treatment is given intravenously for three to five days followed by at least two weeks of oral therapy. Approximately 25% of patients suffer from recurrent episodes of cellulitis, and it is not clear whether prophylactic treatment with low-dose antibiotics, such as phenoxymethylpenicillin, is beneficial. Thanks for watching, I hope you guys liked the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and thank you for your love and support. I really appreciate it, keep supporting AI Medical School.